have to keep in touch with you. Um, and also coming out this week, you'll see some new information about our community ministry, some of the things that will be relaunching and how that will look for our free store, for um, Operation Christmas Child, for uh, Back to School event with St. Mark's, all of those things that are beginning to come to fruition. We want to get that information out to you, and the best way to do that is through Facebook. So keep up to date with that. And because we are online, we are doing our prayer requests differently. Um, we would love to know how we can be in prayer with you and for you. So you can give those requests to any of the pastors or out at the front desk on your way out, and we would love to lift those up to you. We will not be uh, sharing those over the live broadcast, but we will keep those in our own hearts and prayers. If you would like to be added to the prayer chain so you can receive that list, uh, please let the office know. We'll be happy to add you to the prayer chain so that you can be in prayer for the requests that come before us. But now it's just a time to welcome one another, to wave from a distance, to show your greetings of love and care for one another. And let us go into this time of worship, remembering why it is that we're here today. Let us worship. We gather together as a people who Jesus calls into community. So we gather into this place and in our homes where all are welcome. We have come this day to give thanks, to pray, to be with one another, and to worship our God. Praise be to God. Would you please stand as we worship in hearing the hymn, Seek Ye First the Kingdom of God.
As we come into our time of prayer this morning, we know that there are things that are heavy on our hearts. We know that we have people who are in mourning this week. We know that people are in the hospital this week. We know that there are some who probably should be in the hospital this week, but are recovering at home. And we know that our Lord and Savior has those requests already in his heart, as they are in ours. So as we go into this time of prayer, I was ask you to say the words, Lord, hear our prayer as we go through a section. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. God of life, we praise you for your abiding presence from generation to generation to generation. You have blessed your people and your strength in us as we continue to live out our lives in service to you. You continue to empower us to witness to others. So Lord, we lift up those to you who have heard your call and are honoring you through witness and the ways in which we serve others. Lord, hear our prayers. Loving God, you journeyed with Noah and Moses, Ruth, and you comforted Hannah, Mary, and Stephen, and others throughout our Bible stories. Lord, when our lives are burdened with grief, comfort us. Grant us faith to believe you will provide that future and to bring us hope. When we struggle, Lord, Hear our prayers. When we rejoice, Lord, hear our prayers. May our bitterness be turned to joy, and may our loss become a source of hope. May our physical and emotional and spiritual health be restored through your mighty hand. Lord, we lift up to you those who are burdened today with heavy loads. Lord, hear our prayers. Grant, Lord, your grace and mercy upon those we serve and those we have yet to serve in our community. May you encourage their spirit to become one with yours. And Lord, grant that as we serve you now on earth, that we can one day rejoice with all of the saints in your kingdom of light and peace. Through Jesus Christ, we lift this prayer to you as we also say together the Lord's Prayer, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, this is a different season. I don't know if some of you are back for the first time today, and things look a little different around here. And for those of you that are worshiping with us online, it's a completely different opportunity to worship. And we thank you for the ways in which you have been generous with your giving, and that we can continue to be your church, and the church for the community and church around the world. So as um, things were different with our prayer requests, we also are doing offering differently as well. And there are wooden boxes that are outside in the vestibules that you can personally drop your offering into on the way in or out of the building. Um, and we just want to say thanks and give thanks to God for the blessings that you continue to give to this church. Let us uh, just continue in worship with some special music.
morning, our scripture is taken from the New Testament book of Hebrews, chapter 6, verses 1, 11, and 12. Therefore, let us go on toward perfection, leaving behind the basic teaching about Christ, and not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and faith toward God. And we want each one of you to show the same diligence so as to realize the full assurance of hope to the very end, so that you may not become sluggish, but imitators of those who through faith and patience inherit the promises of God. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let's have a word of prayer as we get started this morning. Gracious and loving God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable and pleasing to you. For you, Lord, are our rock, our foundation, our redeemer, and our sustainer. Amen. We've been doing this home builder series for the last several weeks. And if you've missed the last two weeks, our first week we talked about if you're going to build something, you better have a good plan. You need a blueprint. Otherwise, it's going to be a mess, isn't it? Imagine trying to build a home without a plan, a blueprint. Last week we talked about needing to have that solid foundation. To have that set to the which the house and the structure can be built upon. That blueprint is God's plan. That foundation is that relationship with Christ that we build it upon. So today we're going to look at the interior of our spiritual life and of our homes. As we uh, explore this a little bit, I want to share my own little story. I know Dennis has had a chance to share some of his home building projects. Uh, we all have them, don't we? We've all done some type of working on the interior of our homes. Well, when Ken and I were first married, we were in love and young, and had no money, and a little baby, and we were going to buy our first home. So we bought our first home down on West Park Avenue in Franklinton, and we were so proud of that little Keystone home. But boy, it needed some work on the inside. But we knew the foundation was good. So we knew we had a good, solid structure of a home. It just needed some upkeep from the inside. Perfect. That's what we do. Well, you know, if you're doing any kind of home interior project or any kind of home build project, it always becomes bigger than what you expect it's going to be. Now put this together. Very little money, new marriage, new baby, new house. Doesn't always work out real well. Something's going to struggle, isn't it? We started little. We started with just kind of the painting and stripping off of some paneling on the walls. But then the microwave broke. And you know how that goes. When you replace the microwave, the new one doesn't fit into the old opening. So then you've got to expand the opening. I'm seeing all your heads go, uh huh? I can even see your heads online going, uh huh? So the opening has to be changed. Well, then, if you're going to get a microwave, the stove that's underneath that's all ratty needs to be replaced too. So you re look at replacing the stove. Well, then you can't have a refrigerator that doesn't match the stove, so you might as well get the deal and you do the bundle and buy more than one appliance at a time. And this home interior workup of this remodel just kept getting bigger and bigger. Because when you start pulling out appliances, you realize that it's not going to go over the flooring, which was carpet. Carpet in a kitchen just gives me the willies. I don't know about you. 
So the carpet had to go, which meant part of the subfloor underneath it had some run rotting spots, so that had to go, which led into the closet, which then that all had to be pulled out, which then my husband says, well, why don't we go ahead and put in a half bath down here while we're at it? And you're right. If you're going to do that, since you're already bringing in plumbing, you might as well go ahead and put in a first floor level laundry area. This project just kept growing and growing and growing. And, and my husband and I have always been in that mindset, if we don't have money to pay for it, we're not going to do it. We try really hard not to put things on credit cards or take out loans. And so this project, which should have been simple of replacing the microwave, became this month, almost year-long project because we had to do it in the stages that we could afford. But you know, we grow each opportunity that we have to rebuild something. In the midst of rebuilding that kitchen, we got to also spend a lot of time in conversation and in argument and in conversation about what needed to be done and when. So it is sometimes with our faith. Sometimes when we have to relook at something that's not quite right in our lives, we have those conversations with God or, or with others in our family, and sometimes those turn into a little bit of an argument, but then it always goes back to being a part of a relationship. Anytime we do any kind of project, we need to keep in mind who it is that's designing it to begin with. So we're going to look at some of those interior projects. And I know during this season of, of COVID-19, many of you have taken on some home repair projects because you've been home. So why not, right? Hope they don't take a year like my kitchen did. But. But there's been some other responses that we've had to this COVID-19 situation that we've all been in. You know, some of us have gotten wider, and some of us have gotten wider, because you can't get into the salons. Some of us are finding new routines. We're taking care of our kids and our grandkids in ways we never expected. But then there's some of us who haven't had a chance to see their grandkids or kids in months. Some of us have become complacent and fine with just sitting in the recliner watching Netflix over and over. Some of us have found a new routine and have created a new normal in the midst of all of this. Some of us have made health improvements during this time. Some of us are still waiting for procedures to be able to take place and hospitals to open again. Some of us have strengthened the relationships with those in our household. And some through this pandemic have found themselves in domestic violence situations, living in fear and increased anxiety. Some of us have deepened and strengthened our relationship with Christ in the midst of all of this. And some of us, like the scripture said, have become sluggish and not as intentional about deepening our relationship with Christ. So today's scripture reminds all of us that we sometimes can become sluggish. We can't allow the dust to settle on top of our Bible. The one a mentor and friend pastor of mine always would say, you know, your, dust is, your Bible is the only thing that will never need dusted. I was thought, huh? Then when he explained it, he's right. If you're reading your Bible, it doesn't take time to get dust on it. If you're picking up your Bible every day, it can't gather dust. Have you picked up your Bible this week? Today's scripture begins with that word, therefore. We're in chapter 6 of Hebrews, and that first word says, therefore. And those are some of those key words of the Bible that you know that you better pay attention because something's important if you're using therefore. 
Because that means something happened that brings us to this message that Paul's trying to help us understand about not becoming sluggish in our spiritual life. Well, that's back in chapter 5, uh, Paul's writing to these new Christians who are accepting the faith, but not quite sure what to do next with it. And so Paul had to continue to remind them, remember, Jesus died for your sins. Remember, Jesus is the one you should be following. Remember? Remember the Old Testament teachings? Remember these things we've taught you? And Paul has just about had it. If you go back and read chapter 5. And he says in 12, for though, for, for though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone still to teach you again the basic elements of the oracles of God. You need milk, not solid food. And he goes on to say that for everyone who lives on milk, still being infant, is unskilled in the word of righteousness. But solid food is for the mature, for those who have felt the faculties have been trained by practice and distinguish, distinguish good from evil. Paul was trying to tell them, hey, you've got the basics. Now what are you going to do about it? And then that takes us into this message that Paul has in 6 that says, Therefore, it's time to take the next step, to go on into perfection, to leave behind the basic teachings, and to grow into faithfulness, to, to go into that deeper foundation and build upon the foundation, to let go of the old. You don't need that teaching over and over again. It's time to grow. You know, I, I kind of look at it as like, you know, of course I've got a grandbaby that I refer everything to now. It's amazing how your, your focus shifts, doesn't it? But as I'm hanging out with our little girl, and we're singing the little baby songs, and ABC is one of them, and uh, Old MacDonald, and all of these little songs. And, you know, I think about it as I'm teaching her the ABC song. Eventually she's going to learn all of those letters have meaning. And she's going to start to put those sounds together to form words. And then those words are going to become sentences, run, slot, run. And then those sentences are going to become picture books. And those picture books will become chapter books and on into college reading. But if she stayed with only just singing the ABCs into her college years, she's going to have problems, isn't she? That's what Paul's trying to help these people understand. You have to go beyond the basics. You have to go beyond singing the ABCs. That's what Paul's trying to help us to understand today. Paul was trying to get them beyond that foundation and to give them something to build upon. Whether it's a brand new structure or remodel or complete teardown. So let's, let's look at that a little bit. Let's look at our own faith journey. Where are you today? For some of you, it may be that your faith is brand new. You've just accepted Christ into your life. You've built that foundation. You're ready to build and decorate that interior. But you have no idea how to do that. Now, if you're going to go and build a brand new home, are you going to rely on someone who's never built a home before? I mean, I'm not going to ask my dentist to come build my home. They're not going to have the skill set to know how to do that. We're going to rely on people that can help to shape our faith. Someone who's smarter than us and knows more than us has journeyed faith longer than I have. We're going to ask upon the main architect to help to guide us in our decisions as we move forward in life. We're building that foundation and building that structure upon it. When it's brand new, it sure is pretty, isn't it? But after a while, that, that newness fades. And that's what was happening with our new Christians that they were talking about in chapter 5. That newness had faded and they were getting sluggish. So as we have our homes when are also within our faith, we have to continue to work on it to keep it clean to keep it bright and shiny, to keep it fresh and new. And that's what God wants in our relationships, for us to keep it fresh and new every single day. 
did not become sluggish. Maybe your faith is more like a home remodel, where it just needs a little touching up. You've got a good foundation in Christ. You know these Bible stories. You know how to share faith with one another. But sometimes it just becomes like, eh, it's been kind of nice sitting in my recliner watching online. It's been kind of nice not going to Bible study. It's been kind of nice not reading my Bible on a regular basis. We become so sluggish that we forget the importance of sharing faith, of sharing life, of sharing our scriptures together. Don't become sluggish and keep that Bible locked to the shelf. Don't become sluggish and stop being a part of a prayer team, of praying for one another. Don't become sluggish. Tear down the walls that need to be teared down. Replace the appliances in your kitchen and in your heart that need to be replaced. Take care of your physical health and your emotional health in the midst of taking care of your spiritual health. Because they all fit together. And they're all important as you're continuing to go through this season. Maybe some of your faith walks right now need a complete do-over. Maybe it's like some of those home repair shows that we've talked about that you just have to go in and gut the whole place and start all over again. Some of our hearts are so burdened with loss, of illness, of tragedy after tragedy, of problem after problem, that sometimes we just feel there's nothing left to give to anyone. And our hearts need a complete do-over. And that's okay. That's where you're at. Bring the people on board with you to help to rebuild your soul. Help to rebuild your heart and to give you peace again. To help to restore those walls in your house, just like we restore the walls in your heart. One at a time. Brick by brick. Drywall by drywall. One kind word after another. One sense of hope. One sense of encouragement to restore you. Because God is the one who wants to restore us. God is just waiting to be your architect to say, I've got this. I've got your blueprint. It's right here. Why are you trying to fight it? Come alongside me and allow me to show you. But in the midst of also restoring our home, restoring our heart, we need to have people around us who are there to help us. You know, a pastor friend of mine used to talk about the law of the lids, that you always want to be around people that are at a higher level than you so that you strive to be better. Because if we're always hanging out with the people at the same level as we are, we're never going to grow. So always strive to be around people that encourage you, to help you to be the person that God wants you to be. Get involved in worship. We are so thankful that we have the opportunity to worship online. And we're so glad for all of you that are able to come out and be a part of worship. We want you to continue to be studying your Bible. And if you need some assistance in getting restarted or where to even start for the very first time, we want to walk with you in that. There's new Bible studies that Brandy is launching online, and we would love to start additional ones. Let us know how we can journey with you in faith and grow. Let us know how we can build your interior walls to build your heart to feel that hope again if it's lost, to feel that joy, to feel that promise. Because as I've said before, God loves you. And there is nothing you can do about it. God loves you and there is nothing you can do about it. So why not accept it and allow God to continue to work on you? To bring you to spiritual wholeness so that then your emotional health can improve, your physical health can improve, and all of it can work together. And then we can go out and glorify God in powerful ways. God is ready to do amazing work in our lives. So why don't you open the door of your home and allow him to come in 
and do the work. Amen. If you would like to stand for our closing hymn. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord lift up his face upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. We ask that you allow the ushers to come and let you out by love. Thank you. Mm -hmm.